Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. Now, for the past, I would say one month or so, my LinkedIn has been getting flooded with messages, uh, mostly from SOC analysts, and they want to know that do they have a feature or not within SOC because they keep hearing news on LinkedIn and outside about how Agentic AI is replacing the L1 role, you know. Agentic AI is already try aging alerts, it is already responding to alerts. It is already able to do a lot of things like open closing tickets, and all that and they, they are very worried that do they have a future in the next three to five years if they are working in a SOC team. So in this video I want to answer this very very important question based on the facts that I know and hopefully giving you some advice on what you can do about it. If you're new to the channel my name is Tamurish Lal. I'm a senior security consultant with AWS UK and I made this channel to give advice on things like AI, cloud security and general cyber security career advice. So please do like and subscribe to this channel and let's get started. Okay, so first of all, the first question I want to answer is people uh, keep asking me, is it just hype and am I just like trying to scare people? Let us first ans answer the question, is Agentic AI disrupting the job force? And the answer to that is very much yes. Absolutely, Agentic AI is having an impact. Just recently, I want to, if you haven't seen this, Salesforce has cut around 4,000 roles in support because of AI agents. So this is not like just hype. This is not like companies just trying to hype up their products. Agentic AI is having a definite impact on the job market. Okay. And this guy has been very, very, he's been, the, I think, the most honest about this. He has straight up said that I, I need less people because of Agentic AI, because of the impact that Agentic AI is having. And this is what he said, that we are customer zero for the new Agentic service. So we have done about a million and a half conversations. And that's the Agentic layer. And uh, he said that the CSAT scores were the, basically the satisfaction survey. And he was able to rebalance my headcount on my support. I've reduced it from my 9,000 heads to about 5,000 because I need less heads. So please, if somebody comes up to you and tells you, no, Agentic AI is just high up. It's just the new buzzword. It's going to go away. Please, I, you really need to check what the market and what's happening. So definitely there is an impact happening. So that leads me to the question of this video, which is Agentic AI versus SOC analyst. No? Who wins in 2025 and beyond? Because I really want you to understand what Agentic AI can do and what it cannot do and what it means for you as a SOC analyst. Because I see people go in two extremes. They either say, no, uh, Agentic AI is just hype. It doesn't do anything. And there is another extreme also, which is like, uh, you know, they. this is like the <laughs> impression that people have about Agentic AI. They've seen that movie Terminator, like the Skynet is coming, the robots are coming. They're going to take over everything. All the human beings are going to get replaced by these robots. That is also ridiculous. There will always be human beings in need for that sort of things. So please have that balanced approach. Don't go to one extreme or the other. But let's Let's talk about this. So first of all, Agentic AI was a SOC analyst. So the current situation in SOC, the SOC team has always been very, very important within cybersecurity. Why? Because you guys are at the front line of incident response. You know, I have looked after multiple SOC teams in my career and I know the importance of this role, right? Because you have to triage, you have to respond, you have to look at suspicious activity. But the rise of Agentic AI, which is autonomous, goal-driven, AI systems and you know it is able to take action by itself and it is able to do automate a lot of the stuff which SOC teams are doing that is uh, the, the that is why people are asking these questions so that who, the SOC of the future is what is that humans or AI agents and is this still a viable career path now first of all I do want you to understand that the SOC team has always been evolving right initially we just we had the SIM app solution you know remember that and then we moved on to SOAR which is more orchestration and automation. And now we have Agentic SOC. So the uh, the SOC role has always been evolving. So it's not like suddenly uh, we were doing something and now Agentic AI is coming and changing everything. There has always been an evolution. So you have to understand this. This, this will always be happening. And really within cybersecurity, you cannot expect things to remain the same. And change will always be a fundamental part of this role. So, but at the same time, let's let, let's talk about what Agentic AI is bringing to the SOC team, right? So Agentic AI can act like a L1 analyst, right? It can, what can it do? The good things about it, it can scale very, very fast. So uh, AI agents won't get tired. They don't have to take leave. They can pass like log files, SIM alerts, EDR solutions, and routine triage, like the, the they can automate routine tasks. So raising tickets, 
matching IPs to threat intel fails, uh, like blocking IPs, it's very, very easy to do with a Gentic AI. It's not rocket science. And I have done it myself, honestly speaking. It is very, very powerful. The speed and scale of a Gentic AI. Autonomy. So, like I said, it can take action. It's not like Gen AI, where it's just giving you responses. It can actually act. It can uh, simulate an attacker paths. It, like if a login looks suspicious, it can check the geolocation, user behavior history, MFA logs without waiting for a human to click through these logs, right? And this is like, a, what do you call, uh, how the SOC teams are being envisioned, that you have a SOC manager, this can be a human or a, a genetic SOC manager, and you have all these L1 SOC agents which are being spun up. So this is what the SOC team is being envisaged by a lot of companies. So you have this sort of autonomy, then you have consistency. Human beings can get tired, right? Like if you do the same, we are not designed to do the same thing over and over and over again. You do the same job a thousand times, the quality of the work will get suffered. But a Gentech AI does not get tired and it does not like get analysis paralysis, as they say. So the, for doing routine stuff, honestly, it beats human beings every time. And uh, cost efficiency, people do not like to hear this, but this is the reason why job disruption is happening. Uh, having a SOC with 24-7 staffing, you know, you need to have like three shifts, for 24 7 human beings are there people resign people leave jobs people go on leave go on maternity leave all these sort of things are there which are problems which people need to think about they need to think about succession planning so augmenting uh, the teams with ai agents could allow a lot of companies to reduce the headcount this has always been the case how many socks do you know they have been outsourced to uh, manage service providers because the team did not want to worry about all this managing the headcount and thinking about people resigning or replacing. So all of these things come into play when we think about agentic SOC. But what can SOC analysts still, still do better? That is a key question. And this is very, very important. This is where you need to understand the value. A SOC, agentic SOC cannot like understand the business impact. This is something which uniquely human beings can do. So it can flag hey, something is happening on this database, but only a human being will fully understand whether it's like it's some intern who is testing a dashboard or an attacker who is exfiltrating crown jewel data. Agentic SOC might be able to get a little bit more context, but only human beings can fully understand context and what it means, who is the person, what is happening, what is the background, reading between the lines, only human beings can do. So that leads me to the next part, the creative, uh, creative and adaptive thinking, thinking outside the box thinking how an attacker will think. Agentic SOC can simulate scenarios, but they are always based on existing scenarios, right? And this is where human beings have this unique ability, where we think about new types of, like uncharted territory as I've written here. This is only human beings can do. Legal and ethical decision-making. Uh, Agentic SOC is very good at making decisions, but the legal and ethical uh, aspects, sometimes they get missed out unless you put in those guardrails. They were like uh, shutting down a production system. If, if you're working in the medical field, the impact it might have, you know, having the trade off, understanding what is the impact of uh, doing this particular action, what is the ethical, the legal, the regulatory impact of doing a particular change. Only human beings will have this full 360 degrees view of a particular thing. And lastly, very, very important the cross team communication. Like I said, AI cannot calm down a CEO. It cannot calm down your regulators after a breach. It cannot, uh, like, you know, take your team out for lunch to calm you down after there's been a breach. Only human beings can uh, do this. And honestly, SOC teams excel in this. If you're a good SOC analyst, you will know how to translate an incident into something that the executives can understand, that there will be an impact on payroll. There will be an impact on our future uh, holiday at a, like a holiday uh, season that is coming up and you know really understanding the context of attacks SOC teams are much much ahead of uh, agentic AI here so that me leads me to my question that uh, the future of SOC is not competition it is collaboration you cannot ignore agentic AI you you have to understand this so when it comes to tier one types of analysts absolutely agentic AI will dominate if your job is to get an alert open a ticket uh, you know, just check the logs, close the ticket, please. I can guarantee you that Agentic AI will replace that. Tier 2 investigations, this is where human beings and agents will be working together because you will accelerate your analysis, you will augment your analysis, but you still need a human being to interpret results. And Tier 3 headhunting and response, that will be, of course, be human-led, supported by AI, but this is where human beings will still excel. So think of AI, I want you to think of AI as the junior analyst, you know, the guy who never sleeps, 
he is fast, consistent, he is very, very motivated. But human beings will remain the senior analyst and strategist. So that way you can steer the context. And one thing which people forget at Agentica also introduces new types of risks. And what are the things that can happen? Well, first of all, the, the agents themselves can get poisoned. Remember that, please. You, it is very, very easy to poison the data and uh, an AI blind to these sort of techniques that can have like a cascading effect. One agentic AI that gets compromised, it can actually poison the whole agentic ecosystem, which is something which the people do not understand. Agentic AI needs tools, right? It tools integrations for its automation. And if you take over that agent, you can actually misuse those tools. You can raise like a thousand uh, Jira tickets to completely flood your agentic SOC team, leading them to get swamped and leading to a mini DDoS attack. You can have hallucinations and overconfidence. And if you've ever used Genia, you know, you know what happens, right? A hallucinated, a SOC can actually hallucinate a log correlation and lead to hours and hours of wasted response time. That's why you still need a human being to be there and validating the results. And lastly, the accountability gap, which is something people are still grappling with. Like who, if AI takes an action, that leads to business damage, revenue damage. Who is responsible? It is the vendor who gave you the SOC team, like gave you the agentic SOC. Is it the SOC manager, the AI system? That's why these new frameworks are there, like the NIST AI risk management framework, the ISO 42001. That's why you need these sort of things for human in the loop oversight. You still need to make sure that that governance is there. So what does this mean for your SOC career? So the, the question is not if, Agentic AI will transform. It is already happening. The SOC team is already happening. But how do you adapt for it? I want you to look at this as a checklist for your career. If you're in SOC, you need to master AI augmented tools. Start working with AI. If you haven't done that already, start today. Understand how the platforms are integrating AI within their workflows and start using it. Focus on skills which Agentic AI cannot replace, which I've talked about many times before. Get better at communicating, document writing. Uh, uh, get better at public speaking. So you can stand in front of management and talk to them about incidents that have happened. Specialize in adversary simulation threat hunting. So uh, AI, like I said, it will handle the routine things, but only human beings who think like attackers, they will always be in demand. AI red teaming by itself is a complete field which is coming up. You can take a look at that. And lastly, learning AI security. There, there are many, many roles which are coming up which are completely based around AI security. Like I talked about AI red teaming, AI threat modeling. I have so many courses on Udemy. I'll put the links below. You can check them out if you are completely new to the field of AI. So remember that, that uh, agentic AI itself is a new layer which will have to be secured. So that's why you have to think about this in a new way. So key takeaway is what? There is no like versus competition here. Both will win. Agentic AI will win in speed, efficiency and cost savings. But the SOC team will always win when it comes to things like judgment, creativity and leadership. The guy who will lose, the person who will lose and the company who will lose is who completely ignore the ship. Who say they are agentic AI is just hype. I'm not gonna, I'm just gonna keep my head in the sun, not think about this new thing. So if you don't have AI, you will get drowned in noise. If you completely replace your human, human beings when your SOC team, I guarantee you you're setting yourself up for failure. When your agentic AI makes the wrong decisions, when it leads to like when it, the rogue agents take over, or when you have attacks with the agentic AI cannot solve, you will have another issue on your hand. So the winner will be the hybrid teams where analysts are embracing agentic AI as and they're working together with it. So I hope you have a better understanding now. And lastly, I really saw this. I, I found this very useful. So somebody told me that agentic AI is not like this, that, you know, like in the movie Terminator, which is coming to replace. It is more like, you know, like the Iron Man. I, I thought this was pretty cool. This is exactly what I'm saying. So it's augmenting. It's not replacing you like the Terminator. You're It's augmenting like Iron Man, which I thought was like a really good <laughs> example. So I hope you have a much better idea now of how Agentic AI is changing and what you can do as a, a SOC analyst. Remember, Agentic AI is having a very big impact on the job market. But you still have, if you have the ability to get ahead of the market by becoming a agentic AI literate. Check out my courses also, which I'll put in the comments. And I hope you have a much better understanding now. Thank you very much. I will see you in the next video.